So you guys were one. I'm hearing all you guys. You guys wanted a theme song shortened, so here we go. This girl reviews movies, games, and books. Sometimes she plays them. So does that. And when she does it with the cat, does that make her crazy? Does that make her crazy? Probably. <laughs> so, it's shorter. There you go. <laughs> Crazy Cat Lady Gamer Reviewer, or Martha Butler, does not own the any trailers or pictures. I use them under fair use, educational for edu and entertainment purposes. Hi everybody, Martha here. So before Disney decided to get more money, instead of making more money by making a movie that probably, I don't know, I'm, I just don't want them to end up doing the same set thing they did to Must Fit to Cruella, okay? And I just don't see how we're gonna sympathize with Cruella, a person who goes around Killy wants to kill puppies just to wear them and they want us to sympathize with her before they make that movie that comes out tomorrow um man my boyfriend wants to go and see it anyway before that disaster happens it's just not gonna be a good movie i just know it's not but let's talk about the animation movie that was based off a book. Yeah, I know. It's surprising. Disney has not made a movie yet of a book before. Now, Wonder Dalmatians finally said the name. It was a great. I would say um, it was it was a good movie. If I had to pick like between the two movies that were based off of anime movies, they were based off of dogs. But between the like, Lady the Tramp. And this movie. They're both pretty good. I don't know like which one I pick. But this is one of the last last movies that um Walt Disney um had his has his um has his hands in. Like um help because it's like one of the last movies. This is during the sixties. So um this is about what's to start with the story about it. So, um, two cup, uh, um, two dogs named Pongo and Perdita, and their mas and their um, masters, or um, whatever, um, their owners, meet each other, um, Roger and Anita, and they um, get married, and um, also Pongo and Perdita have um, fifteen puppies, and um, one of them. Um, Anita's old college roommates want to make a coat out of these 15 puppies so she ends up kid, um, dog napping them with the help of Horace and Jasper and so um, they so a couple of days go by and for some reason they put them in the newspaper and Scotland Yard cares <laughs> for some reason I know. I, I always find that ridiculous. Why would the why would Scotland Yard care? <laughs> like, I just know they just want to show like the humans are trying to find the puppies. They're trying. They're doing a bad job, but they are trying. But okay. But uh, there sadly I would say um there is some animation mistakes, and it'd be really hard for them not to do one. With these mini dogs on the screen, there's like uh, I would say um, two times, like three times, where um, the during the meeting scene where Pongo and Perdita trade places, like magically, um, um, Pongo's in the water. Magically, he's out of the water. Magically, um, and uh, Perdita is like walking out of the water when she didn't fall into the water. So and also sometimes they get. Um, the puppies mixed up with each other. Like one time, uh, Patch is walking towards um Jasper to bite him, and it ends up being um, lucky. And I think 
I don't know. It's not. It's not their fault. It's just so hard to keep track of so many other dogs, and I'm not mad at them for it. Just, I just found. Sometimes I found it funny <laughs> when I had to when I was watching this this time. Who knows how many times I've watched this movie? You you notice this after so many times, and I'm not mad. As just like to point it out. <laughs> And so the Twilight Bar happens when they're like um, going to get um, the um, the puppies. That's how they like tell the other dogs about it. And I like the fact that even though they're not in America, um, Lady the Tramp show Lady the Tramp dog show up. Like first Jock shows up, then um, Peg and the Bulldog, then. Um, Anyway, um, we also get Lady and Tramps show up at the end of the scene at the um, during the Twilight Bark. So um, they end up getting the Twilight Bark to um, a sheepdog named the named Colonel, and um, him and um, Sergeant Tib go into um, Deville Hall, and they end up finding um, the the puppies and Jasper and Horace. And um, he reports back to them, and um, they get the Great Dames or Hamster, and they go and get the um, they Pongo and Perdita go to the um, Deville Hall, and they find out. Yep, yeah, they were right. It's, it is Cruella Deville. What a shocker! The lady that has a name, first name Cruel and last name Devil, is the bad guy. What a shocker! Um. I do like how she's animated. I just really like the fact that she's really a skinny lady, but she's not let her sides fool you. Because she did take off her fur coats. You find out how thin she really is. <laughs> but she never is not not wearing any. Even when she's sleeping, she's wearing a fur coat. So, so because we um, find her in, um, in her bed when she's like waking up, and um, Jasper and Horace is like asking for their money. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> and so I like like the two shows they end up showing it during this too. Like one of them is a silly sympathy, and is also is a parody of a show. The one that is um, what's my crime? It's actually a parody of a TV show called What's My Line, and that that um. Walt Disney um, showed up in, showed up on. So it's actually pretty cool that they would actually it no longer like that show's no longer relevant anymore because that show's no longer on TV. But it's still funny that that they have to watch that show first before they kill the puppies. I mean, they don't even want to skin. They they don't mind killing the puppies, which is sad. But they don't want to skin them. Like, who wants to skin a dog? A little alone kill them. So, um, they end up going, they end up, like, escaping um, and hiding from them. And, um, then we see a very big dog slash room fight between these four. And that's when they escape and go back to the farm. And then we actually see a Homer Bound incredible journey instead of, um, a dog and a cat and a dog and a, and a Two dogs and a cat. We see it with um, 101 dogs. So yeah, and um, they get back to uh, they get to a place where they end up having. We see them two hit two different areas where they get some milk from a collie and um, some cows, and also we see them meet a a black lab, and um, and they end up. Again, they're turning to black lads basically by fooling them. So they finally get home from their long journey, and um, Anita and um, Roger, instead of selling them because they are crazy, if they think even if Roger made a billion dollars on the Corella Deville song. It's still not enough money to take care of 101 dogs. It's still not enough. You get to pay for feed. You get to pay for to feed them. You get to pay to to um, bathe them. Take them to the vet. 
They just need to sell them. Just don't get, you don't have to give them to Krella. There's other people out there who are just as nice as people as Roger and Anita, okay? They do not need to keep them, okay? I mean, it's really nice of them that they're willing to be this nice and keep these mini dogs, but let's stay logical here. They're gonna go bankrupt, okay? <laughs> they're gonna end up homeless. I'm sorry, people. I'm sorry to all those kids who think it's so easy to take care of that many dogs. It's not. <laughs> I don't care if they live on a farm. It's not easy to take care of that many dogs. Okay? That song is not a cheerful dog a song. <laughs> okay? You really think about it. <laughs> but if you don't believe me, go watch... Um, Matt Pat's video on his film theory and shows how wrong they are to have that many dogs at once. And the fact that they don't get them fixed. If they don't get Pongo and Nita fixed or any of the dogs are fixed, they're not gonna, they're gonna just have more mouths to feed. Eventually. <laughs> so, this movie is really good. It's, the ending is not, if you really think about it, you just it's not a good ending for for Nita and Roger. Okay, <laughs> I am sorry, kids. <laughs> so they just end up keeping the dogs and going to live on a farm. So that's how that's how the story ends. <laughs> and that's all I'm gonna say about that. So I like the movie. Just really wish they weren't making Gorilla. I just don't want to see any more Disney villains get ruined. No more, please. <laughs> you cannot make me sympathize with somebody who kills, wants to kill a puppy. No, you can't. No, you can't. She's a bad person. <laughs> Prince is nodding his head at me saying, you can't sympathize with somebody who wants to kill dogs. <laughs> <laughs> So, and, um, the remake, I don't know. I like the remakes. I do like who they got to play Cruella. Glenn Glows is a good Cruella. She did a great job, but it's basically the same movie. Okay? And I watched it again yesterday, and during the part where, um, they're coming back from being dog-napped is pretty much the most boring part of the movie. It's basically Home Alone with dogs. Okay, that's what I think of that part. Because the fact that they don't talk is basically home alone. With the... See, how many times can... How much pain Jasper and Horace and Corolla can be put through? It's basically that. It's basically home alone. With... Because it's, you're just asking the same as that question. How many times can Harry and Marv can get hurt? And how, who can actually get the worst? They even, want, they even ask that question in that movie. Who won... Ho, ho, ja, Horace asked... Who won the gold? Like, really? You wanna know who won the gold during that? You did, okay? Because what happened to you when that? Let's see. You got frozen. You dropped into a bunch of water that was frozen in ice. Because for some reason, there's a freaking lake right in front of Corolla's house that she can just walk in onto, and right in front of her door. Why is there a lake right in front of her door? <laughs> um. But anyway, he's he gets froze. He gets he almost gets um, pneumonia. Basically, he could have got pneumonia once he gets right out of that water, and he also gets like, electrocuted. Um, Jasper did not only had to fall on top of a pogo table, and also got electrocuted. And um, I'm not sure what. Uh, only thing that really happens to Corella is that she falls into some, like, brown stuff. I'm not sure what it is. It's not chocolate. It's something else. <laughs> it's brown. It's not tobacco. It's brown. <laughs> it's brown tobacco. It's gray. Oh. Why would they have tobacco in a farm? I don't know. <laughs> okay. It's not, he's not that kind of farmer. We did not see any tobacco in that in that area. Okay. 
<laughs> and I thought it was chocolate because she found something brownish, but it's not, okay? <laughs> but... I just said it's not chocolate! <laughs> But anyway, she oh, fell. <laughs> she fell into something that is brown. That's her. So the V. <laughs> and then she <laughs> lands into a bunch of. She lands into a pigsty, which we know what's in there. It's mud and something else. I'm not gonna say what the other thing is, because we know what pigs do in their pigsty. Okay. I'm not gonna say the other thing. I might get in trouble. <laughs> I don't know. And then they add another character in that movie that's called Skinner, which is job is to take the place of Jasper and Horace skinning the dogs because they're turning more faithful to the book because, um, I guess Corella had a husband in the book. Hmm. Somebody married her. Somebody had the same as that. Somebody has the same exact dark heart that loved Cruella or something like that where she's actually against getting married in that movie so but she gets mad at Anita for, kiss, for marrying Roger in that movie so I don't know that movie's the, it's just so much similar to that movie I understand why they're doing a different way of telling the story instead but I don't know We'll see how Emma Stone does it. But anyway, it's a, it was a good... This first movie was a good movie. And the remake, out of all the Disney remakes out there, I'm, this is the best one because of who they got to play Cruella. And House did not... And House... Hugh, 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 Hugh Laurie, the one who plays Jasper, he does a good job too. Okay. So I also like so I mostly like this movie and it's a good movie and good anima animation. And so I'm gonna give this one an eight out of ten. Trent says nine out of ten. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>